everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you five easy ways to make canned soup suck less. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with canned soup. It can be a great convenient meal. It's also a good budget friendly option most of the time. And it can be a good way to get in some shelf stable produce and plant-based protein. But you can usually tell that it's been sitting in a can for a while. And I think we can all agree that canned soup tastes a lot different than freshly made soup. And you wouldn't be wrong because there is an actual scientific reason why canned soup just doesn't taste as great. And it's called volatile flavor compounds. So heat is essential to making a lot of foods taste great and bringing out their flavor, but too much heat can actually contribute to flavor loss. Every food has volatile, which means airborne, flavor compounds that when you add heat to it or even when you cut it, some of the flavor is escaping. And so for example, if you take fresh lemon juice, it's gonna taste a lot different. It'll taste more floral, maybe more bright than that lemon juice that comes in those plastic containers at the grocery store. It definitely tastes more dull and flat and like not all the flavor is there. And it's not because some of it's already gone. So canned food is nutritious and it's still good for you, but in order to preserve canned food and make it shelf stable, obviously this food has to be cooked and it has to undergo a few natural cooking processes in order for it to last longer. And because we're adding heat to our food and then we're reheating it again on the stove or in the microwave or however you reheat your food, more and more flavor is going to be lost each time because you're essentially cooking some of it out. Luckily for you, I have five easy ways to amp up the flavor in your canned soup with minimal effort and maximum results. So we're gonna get into those in just a second, but this doesn't even count as a tip. I'm just gonna have to say that you can't microwave your canned soup. I know the microwave is convenient, and I once was a total diehard microwave fan, but I actually did look it up, and again, there is a scientific reason why food that's reheated in the microwave doesn't taste as good. It's because the heat that goes into your food in the microwave isn't the same as the stuff that happens on the stove. Essentially, it tastes different, the flavors aren't the same. I'll link the article below if you wanna know more about it, but our canned soup already doesn't have that much flavor. We're not gonna microwave it to reduce the flavor even more. I'm sorry, yes, you'll have to clean a pot, but we're trying to make the food taste good. I think it's worth it. So my first real easy tip is to add aromatics, which are things like garlic, onion, and celery. Technically, aromatics are usually a combination of vegetables and herbs that are cooked in fat at the start of a recipe in order to infuse flavor throughout the dish. So that's why most cooking recipes Start with sauteing onion, garlic, maybe celery, bell peppers, etc. in a little bit of oil. If you don't cook with oil and you don't want to lose out on this flavor, you can also cook it in some coconut milk. It's not exactly the same, but the fat in the coconut milk will still help bring out these flavors. So the easiest aromatic to add, I would say, is definitely garlic. I think for most of us, if we're heating up a can of soup, we're not really going to want to chop an onion or chop some celery. If you happen to have some left over in the fridge, you can use it, but you can easily slice up garlic quickly. You can use a garlic press. You can just grate it, toss it into some oil before you add your soup to the pot. And it's going to bring a lot more flavor and pizzazz to your soup. Along the same lines, if you have any fresh herbs or dried herbs that you wanna throw in with some garlic, maybe some rosemary or thyme or basil, we'll get into that in just a second. But that's gonna add a lot of flavor too. If you're really, really against chopping some fresh garlic, you can buy the jar garlic from the grocery store, but I really don't like that stuff. Like I just said, volatile flavor compounds people. It doesn't taste as good. It's not that hard to mince some garlic, but aromatics. Add them and watch how magically it can transform your soup. Tip number two is to add dried spices to your food. So this can include dried herbs if you want, but in general, adding spices to your food is going to be the most effective and also the cheapest and like laziest or easiest way to add flavor to your soup because you only have to add a little and you're gonna get big results. So like the aromatics that we just talked about, spices are going to be more flavorful if you saute them in a little bit of oil or even if you dry toast them before you add your soup to the pot. But if you've already added your soup to the pot and you think it needs a little more, you can add in the dried herbs or spices or whatever then as well. It's still going to add flavor and amp up the sad soup situation. Now you're probably thinking, but Caitlin, I don't know what spices to add to my soup. So I'm gonna go through a few of my favorites. A great easy one, I think, is to add Italian seasoning because it's already a blend of dried Italian herbs. I feel like it's pretty versatile. I use this in a lot of cooking when I just want to add a little bit of extra flavor. This is a great one to go with. It's also widely available like 
everywhere. I mean, all these spices are. Next up, I'm gonna say smoked paprika because smoked paprika will add a subtle sweetness and smokiness, which really contributes to umami and depth of flavor in a soup. It's really versatile, honestly, off the top of my head. I can't think of a single soup you couldn't add this to where it wouldn't add something positive to it. It's one of my favorite spices, so I might be biased, but little goes a long way and it's not that expensive either. You can also add some spice to your soup. So here I have some cayenne pepper and then our good old black peppercorns. And adding spice is going to obviously amp up the flavor because you're contributing another level of flavor. But just in general, adding spice to any food even if you add it in a tiny, tiny amount where you can't taste the spice, it interacts with the taste buds on your tongue and it's going to make the food more flavorful in general. So even if you're not a total spice fiend, even just adding like a pinch of cayenne pepper and grinding some black peppercorns into soup where you won't even notice in the final flavor, you're actually going to taste the other flavors in your soup even more. And then last but not least, I'm going to suggest curry powder. Curry powder is a blend of Indian spices and different brands definitely vary in flavor but if you have a pretty neutral soup or maybe you even find like an indian curry in a can and the flavors just aren't as fresh you want to spice it up a little bit more saute some garlic maybe some ginger add some curry powder then add in your soup it's going to be great and if you're still a little confused another easy way to determine what spices you want to add to your soup is to just look at the ingredients on the can and think like you were creating a recipe from scratch and you need to season these vegetables so let's see this is a split pea soup. I just picked one up. I got some peas, onion, celery, carrots, basil, garlic, bay leaves, and black pepper. So I could saute some garlic and add it to this. If I had some bay leaves on hand, I could add those too. And it already lists basil, so I could add some dried basil or Italian seasoning to boost this up a notch. My third tip is to add carbs. Now this doesn't apply to every soup, but Let's look at this uh, chunky vegetable soup, for example. It's kind of like a minestrone, but there's no pasta in it. And when I look at the ingredients, it is entirely made of low calorie vegetables with, there's actually not even oil in it. So it's just low calorie vegetables and salt. And per one can, there's 130 calories. Now I don't count calories, but I know that that amount of calories and just eating like low calorie vegetables mixed with water it's not enough for a meal. And if I'm going to go to the trouble to heat up some soup, make a meal out of it, make it taste better, I definitely want it to keep me full for a few hours. So a great way to do this is to add calories to your soup. And I think we all can agree that carbs are very satisfying. They're also budget friendly and affordable. So just as a few examples, you can cook some pasta on the side and add it to your soup if your soup doesn't already have it. I honestly don't like to buy canned soups with pasta in it because the pasta is just beyond soggy. Like, no. You can also chop up some potatoes and toss that in with your soup. So if you're doing like a lentil soup or maybe a black bean soup, I mean, honestly, even a vegetable soup, potatoes are great and they go with anything. Another option is to bake potatoes or even sweet potatoes ahead of time and serve your soup over it like a sauce, or you could also cook up some rice to make the meal more filling, make the soup go a little bit longer and pour the soup on top. So it's kind of just like eating a curry with rice. And then last but certainly not least, we have, I think almost everyone's favorite soup accompaniment, bread. You can toast up a slice of bread. You could even make a bread bowl, put your soup in that. It's gonna be great. I mean, bread is great. And if you do wanna make the meal more filling, for example, you have this low calorie soup, protein is not essential in every meal. As long as you eat enough calories in the day, you're getting enough protein. But you could also choose to add some protein to your meal. And that can be as easy as adding some like bean-based pasta to the soup. Or you could add in some extra beans if your soup doesn't have it already. But I feel like most soups do, so this isn't an issue. Um, you could also even chop up some tofu and throw it in there. Or some vegan meat substitutes. If you really want to make like a full complete meal or something. Step four is to add acid to your soup. And acid is great to add in meals in general if you think that it tastes pretty good, but the flavors just aren't exactly where you want them to be and you wanna add a little bit more oomph. Adding acid is an easy way to lift up the flavors and add some tanginess, like a little zippiness. So it just tastes a little bit more fresh. Especially if you have a creamy dish, it can help cut through the heaviness of the dish. And actually, if you have soup that's too salty or in general make a dish that's too salty, adding acid to your dish will actually make it taste less salty. So it's still edible. So the most versatile example of acid I can think of would be lemon juice. I always keep lemons on hand because they last a pretty long time on your counter or in the fridge. 
You can just slice one in half, add some fresh lemon juice. Lemon juice flavor does cook off and get more bitter the longer you cook something. So if you really want that full body floral flavor, I would suggest just adding it into the end of your dish and then stirring it into the soup. I do that in a lot of my own recipes. And again, to remind you, we're talking about volatile compounds here. So this stuff is way better than the stuff that comes in a plastic cart. No exceptions. Vinegar is another great acid to have on hand. This is probably more cost effective because obviously this bottle is not going to be going bad anytime soon. And it's not like I need to go to the store often to pick up more lemons. And you probably don't need to add as much either. So I would say the most versatile vinegar would probably be apple cider vinegar or here I have some balsamic vinegar. This would be great in any Italian based soup. I think it would also be great in a lentil soup. And again, you don't have to add a ton where your soup now tastes like balsamic vinegar. You're just adding enough so you get a little tangy flavor in your soup. So you could use red wine vinegar. You could probably use distilled vinegar, but I would just go very light on that. And then the last acid that we definitely need to talk about is hot sauce. If you make soup from home, I'm sure at some point or other you've added a few dashes of Tabasco or another hot sauce to your soup. And hot sauce is basically killing two birds with one stone, except you know, like the vegan version of that analogy. I'm not sure what that is. Hot sauce is both an acid and some spice. And if you're paying attention and are just skipping through the video, like I know a lot of you do, we already learned that adding just a tiny bit of spice to your food helps to bring out the flavors as well. So when you're adding this, you're basically getting a twofer because you're adding some tang to your food and you're also adding some heat. And again, you don't need to add it to the point where your soup is now like a boiling vat of hot lava, both in temperature and in spice level. We're just adding a little bit to get some more flavor. My fifth and final tip is to add some greens to your soup. And greens are, well, I think delicious, nutritious, and they can add a nice just element of freshness and also a pop of color and nutrition to an otherwise perfectly fine can of soup. Oftentimes I love to add greens. Let's see, where, where'd that guy go? I love to add greens to my lentil soup um, just because let's be honest, this is a vat of brown stuff. It doesn't look very appetizing. And we do eat with our eyes before we eat with our mouths. So just adding some spinach to your soup can really make a big difference. Another way to add greens to your soup, um, where you don't need as much of them if you happen to have them on hand, is by using fresh herbs. Because um, fresh herbs obviously have more flavor. If you don't have their dried counterparts, for example, I have some cilantro here, fresh basil would also be good, maybe some parsley. Um, these are more of a garnish. I wouldn't necessarily add them to the soup itself, but you could sprinkle a little on top. It adds some textural and flavor variation throughout the soup, makes it more interesting. And you know, just another way to add some color and fun. I will say one thing about greens though, make sure you don't overcook your greens because overcooked greens just don't taste as great. So for example, with spinach, this is my favorite green to add to soups because I think it's the most neutral in flavor. Really don't need much to wilt it down. So you can add whatever spices stuff to your pot, add your soup in, simmer it for a few minutes so it all gets incorporated and it's nice and warm. And then just turn the heat off and right at the end, stir in some spinach. Um, the soup will be hot enough and the spinach will actually help cool it down to room temperature so you can eat it even faster. And if you're not a fan of spinach or you want to use another green, you can also do this with like kale, collard greens, Swiss chard, maybe even bok choy. Uh, I feel like that'd be kind of weird in most canned soups, but I don't know. Um, but all of those greens are a little hardier and take more time to cook. It's still totally fine to use them. Just make sure they're nicely chopped and then add them to your soup. You're just going to need to cook it for a few more minutes. I definitely wouldn't turn off the heat beforehand, especially with something like kale or collard greens. Just simmer for a few minutes and then once you think the kale is good, turn the heat off, serve it up, you're good to go. So that wraps it up. Those are my five easy tips to add flavor to any soup. And honestly, the more you practice this, the better you'll get at it, where you're not even thinking about it. You just take your can of soup out of your pantry and you just saute some garlic, add the soup, add whatever, and you're good to go. Now you can do one of these tips to any can of soup. You can do all five of them to a can of soup if you really want to juice it up. Um, it's really just going to depend on the soup. And like I said, with practice, you'll be able to tell what soup needs what. So I just picked these soups up from my grocery store. I find it kind of hard to find vegan soups in a lot of places, um, but there still are some good vegan options. I just picked all these Amy soups up. Believe it or not, Amy's is not sponsoring this video. This, these were just the best options that my store had. So, you know, we leave a hate comment or whatever. So when you buy any canned soup, my first suggestion would be just to open the can and taste it cold. It's going to taste better warm, 
but that way you can get a good idea of how the soup tastes and how you want to change it and just go through with one of the tips that I just gave you. And if you're still kind of confused, maybe you need a little bit more help, I'm now going to go through each of these soups and tell you what I would do to each of them to make them taste better. So first up we have our good old lentil soup and to start out I just sauteed a clove of garlic in one teaspoon of oil and then once that was nice and toasty I added in the lentil soup. I actually like the spices and flavor of the soup as is. I really like the flavor of lentils so it didn't need to do much. And then at the end I did want to add a pop of freshness so I just added some fresh spinach and then stirred that in until it was wilted. And if you got a different type of lentil soup, you weren't as happy with it, you could definitely add more seasonings, maybe add some lemon juice or balsamic vinegar at the end. Both of those would be really good too. Next up, I cooked up the chunky vegetable soup and to start out, I sauteed some garlic and then I also added Italian seasoning because the soup was literally just vegetables and water. There was no oil, salt, well, maybe there was salt, but no other seasoning. So I added the Italian seasoning to help boost it up and then I added the soup into the pot and brought it to a simmer. And then at this point I added in some leftover cooked pasta that I had in my fridge. You could definitely add more if you want to, but I actually thought this was a pretty good ratio for the soup. And that was it. Honestly, those few changes made the soup taste so much better. I was not a fan of it before, but after this, I really, really enjoyed it. Next up, I have a can of black bean vegetable soup. So again, I sauteed some garlic, and then this time I decided to add some smoked paprika to give the soup more depth of flavor and a nice smokiness. I thought that would work really well with the black beans. So then I added the can of soup in, and I forgot to mention this earlier, but if you have soup that's stuck at the bottom of the can, a good thing to do is just toss a little bit of water and then dump that into the can, and that way you're not wasting any soup. And oftentimes canned soups are a little bit thick for my preference. So then once the soup was simmering, I added some hot sauce to it to add some acid and spice again, and then I mixed that in. And then last but not least, I garnished this with a little bit of fresh cilantro to give it a nice pop, and because cilantro definitely works well with black bean soup. So the next soup was a rustic Italian vegetable soup. I'd never seen this before, so I was interested to try it. Honestly, I don't have too many complaints about it in terms of the flavor. Um, if anything, it was actually a little too greasy and it was super, super thick. So as you just saw there, I added a ton of water to it. And then I just added a little bit of black pepper to help bring out the flavor of the soup. But other than that, I was pretty satisfied with it. So I just heated it up and then added it to a bowl. It was definitely a little bit more runny because I added the water to it, but I definitely prefer my soups more like this than super, super thick. And then last but not least, I had a split pea soup again. Overall, I was pretty happy with the flavors of the soup, so I just added it to a can. It was a little thick, so I had to shake it with water to get the rest of that out. And then again, I kept things pretty simple for this one. I just added some black pepper, and I did think it needed a little bit of something at the end. So I added the juice of about a fourth of a lemon. I didn't use all of this lemon half, but once I stirred that into the soup, it definitely tasted a lot more bright and fresh, and it was really enjoyable. All right, guys, that is it for this video. If I miss something that you do to make soup taste better, please leave a comment down below and let us all know because we're all just helping each other out here. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, feel free to click that little button right down there. I post one to two new videos every single week revolving around easy vegan recipes and lifestyle tips. So, you know, if that sounds good to you. You know what to do. Uh, I also just really appreciate when you guys like my videos and leave a positive comment. It really does mean a lot to me. So thank you for that. If you guys have any other suggestions for maybe like canned goods or pantry foods that you think taste a little eh and you want to make them taste a little better, leave a comment below and let me know too. I could film a video on that. Um, that's it though. I hope you guys are having an awesome day and continue to have one. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.